Now that I've uh, changed the engine oil, spark plugs, distributor cap and rotor, and drained the transmission and torque converter and flushed the coolers, and uh, changed out the rear differential fluid, the uh, next thing on my list is to completely flush out the brake fluid throughout the entire system, starting with the master cylinder. I'm going to use a uh, pressure bleeding kit that I have that will fit right over top of the reservoir opening and will um, run, I'm going to try to run a whole gallon of nice fresh brake fluid, hopefully that's enough, through the entire system. and. Um, that will clean out all the brake lines, put all new fresh fluid in there. I doubt this fluid's ever been changed and judging from the looks of it, it's kind of dark and black. It definitely hasn't been changed. And um, the thing about brake fluid is it's, it's uh, adiabatic, which means it absorbs water and loses its effectiveness. So that's why they say on the back of the cans, to um, keep it clean and dry. So really, this should be done every couple of years or so, especially in humid conditions, to uh, keep your brake system running fine and to minimize um, corrosion or deterioration starting in the brake lines from the inside out. You definitely don't want to have rusted brake lines and uh, more importantly, don't want to have a damaged uh, ABS unit. ABS valve body. This truck has anti-lock brakes, but it's only for the uh, rear wheels instead of the front wheels, which was um, very common on trucks from this era, 1995, but still, that unit is located right around there. It's frame mounted, it's very expensive, and uh, I want to run bra fresh brake fluid through there to make sure that the ABS system works properly and doesn't let me down. So, to do this, it's generally recommended to start at the rear first because of the, the length of the lines and specifically to start at the uh, right rear and then left rear and then right front and left front. And uh, the reason is you've got your main brake line right here for the both rear wheels and it tees off, you have a fairly short line right here and a much longer line all the way over there. So you want to start with your longest lines first and work your way up to the shorter lines. And to bleed the brakes, uh, this car has drum brakes, which is typical also. To bleed them, there's a little bleeder screw right there and it's kind of dark under here hope you can see looks like that has never been loosened up so this may prove to be a challenge but what we're going to do is we're going to apply pressure to the system via the master cylinder and then we're going to crack these bleeder screws open one at a time starting at the right rear and then the left rear here and we're going to wash all the old fluid drain out into a catch can and we'll keep doing that until it comes out clean and then we'll go over to the other wheel and do the same thing but um, first I've got to jack the rear of the truck up and get these tires off I've already got the all the lug nuts um, loosened up and uh, that's a good trick to, to do is just go ahead and loosen all the lug nuts first while the truck is on the ground and the tire won't move and then jack up the truck and then go ahead and take your wheel off. And uh, sorry for all the background noise, the uh, neighbors over there are having a tree chop down. So um, hopefully you guys can hear what I'm doing. I guess they're getting all their chores finished before the winter time just like I'm trying to do. But um, let me get started on this, get the uh, truck jacked up in the air and uh, get all set up and get going. Okay, I've almost got the truck up in the air and I uh, paused here because I want to show you guys something. Um, one thing about jacking up a car is you want to be safe. And uh, this, this truck is really easy to jack up. You want to always try to use jack stands like there, right under the leaf spring basically, the support area for the axle on both sides. And what I like to do is leave the jack 
under the differential where I was jacking it under a little bit of tension just in case any one of these jack sands fails or slips on something you've got that jack acting as a backup. I'm not working on the differential today so that jack's not going to be in the way. So this is a uh, very secure. It's not going to go anywhere. And uh, one thing I wanted to show you guys, if, um, if you don't have any information about your vehicle, you're not really sure if you have a limited slip differential or a standard differential. Um, oh yeah, and by the way, one thing I wanted to also say is when you jack them up, there's no need to jack the car up as high as you possibly can. You just need it a little bit off the ground to uh, get the tires off. There's no reason to have it 10 feet off the ground. It just minimizes the potential energy and chances for an accident. But um, if you don't know if you have a limited slip differential or a standard differential, um, a quick test you guys can do is um, rotate either one of the tires by hand with the vehicle off the ground. And if you have a limited slip differential, both rear wheels should spin in the same direction. So I'll go ahead and start turning it. And you can see that both spin in the same direction. So, that's the purpose of the limited slip in there, is you're getting full power to both tires at the same time. If this were a standard differential, what would happen is, is if I turned either one of these wheels in one direction, like this is going forward, that wheel back there would be going in the opposite direction. So, um, that's how you guys can quickly tell if you don't have any information on the car to go by or can't find anything on uh, Google. So um, I'm going to go ahead and uh, get these tires off and uh, see what we got. Okay, I've got the uh, wheels off on both sides and now's a good time to actually uh, pull these big drums off and check the condition of the brake linings and everything. However, I'm going to wait for another day to do that. These drums are just stuck on the uh, axle really hard and I don't want to spend the time to uh, break these big things loose right now. I want to go ahead and uh, get a brake bleed job done and then hit these drums a little bit later. I uh, got my uh, wrench attached to the bleeder screw back there which you can't see because it's real cramped. And I have the uh, bleeder hose coming down into the catch can. I'm using the uh, Motor Products Power Bleeder, which you guys uh, may have seen on TV. And so that's the main catch can. It's uh, hung up on one of the uh, U-bolts here to be sturdy. And I have a auxiliary catch can here, so I can go ahead and dump this out and keep going. And then on the other side, toward the front, we've got the main unit here. So it comes with these different kinds of universal adapters when it's, and it's got a gasket under here and you just run a chain under the master cylinder and just clamp that down as hard as you can to provide a good seal. And then you run your uh, fresh brake, brake fluid through here and then we'll go ahead and um, just pump this thing up to about 10 pounds. You don't want to exceed 10 pounds. And you can kind of see some of the brake fluid going into the hose there. It already kind of overfilled the reservoir there when I pumped it up a little bit earlier. But you pretty much don't want to exceed 10 pounds because you could damage the brake system, especially if it's got anti-lock brakes. That's good enough right there. So now we'll come on to the other, <coughs> to the other side. And we'll uh, crack this bleeder screw for the first time. And there you get to see some of that old nasty fluid coming out. Kind of coming out slow. This bottle is opaque so you can't really see very well but you can kind of see in the color of the hose um, what kind of fluids coming out of here pretty nasty stuff and um, yeah now you can begin to see 
it should be almost clear and it's not so these uh, brakes have never been bled before that's just not the kind of fluid you want floating around in the system especially with ABS so while that's still bleeding we have to remember to come up here and monitor our pressure and uh, that's still pretty good and uh, check for leaks I got a paper towel under there just to catch any leaks in case it uh, does leak we certainly don't want to ruin a nice paint job here so you want to just uh, keep towels handy in case you do get some splattering going on uh, go ahead and keep pumping a little bit try to maintain that 10 pounds some of the better models have uh, air compressor hookup. You can run some compressed air through here and uh, automatically keep the pressure going. But that's actually bleeding pretty good. And we'll come back over here and monitor the progress. It's filling up quite nicely. It's a slow process. you got to remember how long that brake line is. It's got to go through the master cylinder and through the ABS module and all through the twists and turns of the line. So it's going to take a while. But uh, you basically just want to keep draining and emptying that bottle to keep draining until you see some uh, nice, fresh, clear fluid through here. So we'll let that continue to uh, bleed out. And after that, we will uh, switch over to this side, which won't take nearly as long because the fluid will be fresh coming into the T, and we'll just have to bleed what's uh, caught in this line here and also the uh, wheel cylinder in here. And then after that, we'll uh, go ahead and start bleeding the front wheel. Hopefully you guys can already see the uh, fluid in that reservoir is looking a lot better. So we may have already uh, made one complete pass through the system. And um, I went ahead and for the first <coughs> drain of that bottle, drained it into a clear gas container, glass container. So you guys can see exactly how old and crappy that fluid is. That's just, that's pitiful. That should be slightly tan and much clearer than that. So that's that's just really really old. Probably got air in it and water and everything else. So uh, definitely want to get all that old stuff out of there and uh, go in with new fluid. And we'll check our bottle over here. You can see that's looking a little clearer now that I've uh, went through one cycle of this. What's coming out of here is, at this point in time, is more of a mixture of old and new fluid. Eventually, when I keep doing this process, we'll just get completely new fluid through here. And that's when I'll know when to stop on this wheel and uh, continue on with the other wheels. One thing about the uh, process I'm using, you want to be careful of, is uh, not getting any air into the system. So you want to kind of be vigilant and, and watch this closely. You want to make sure you keep your 10 pounds up, which it's going down because it's coming out in, in the bottle on the other end. But you want to make sure that you're not running out of fluid. I got plenty of fluid in there still, but you don't want this to get to the point where you're pumping air through the system. So if that happens, you'll have to pretty much start all over again and bleed all four wheels and get all the uh, air out of there to avoid a spongy pedal. Turns out the leakage I had was right around that uh, seal right there. So that seal is getting a little bit weak. Can't really handle 10 pounds, but under normal circumstances, with no pressure on the master cylinder reservoir, uh, that doesn't leak. So I'm not going to be too worried about replacing these, but in actuality, these are pretty easy to replace and pretty cheap. I got a towel under there just in case to uh, catch any leaks. So. Uh, Go ahead and add more pressure and um, just try to maintain that 10 pounds and uh, we'll continue on with the process. Okay, I emptied that bottle for the uh, second time 
into a uh, clear glass container so you guys can start to see the difference. So, pretty night and day comparison there. First container on the left was the initial bleed, and uh, the container on the right is what I got coming out of there right now. And that's a difference between almost night and day. The brake fluid on the right looks almost new and uh, no bubbles, so that's a, a huge difference. I'd rather have the stuff on the right in my system versus the stuff on the left because I don't want the brake lines to rust from the inside out. I don't want any kind of uh, problems with the uh, anti-lock brake module. So um, this makes it just really easy to see the difference. I feel pretty good about that, getting all new fluid in here. So um, we'll let that go for a third time and we'll move on to the left rear wheel. Okay, there's the uh, final verdict of uh, the uh, old fluid and the new fluid coming out of the uh, right rear wheel. Huge difference there. And um, now I've got everything attached to the uh, left rear wheel. And I went ahead and uh, added more brake fluid in here because we don't want to pump any air through the master cylinder. And I uh, got it up to uh, 10 pounds. And that's uh, starting to rain, unfortunately, so that's just not what you want getting into your right fluid of the water. So I gotta kinda hurry up. Between working 15 and a half hours yesterday and bad weather, I can't get much stuff done. So we'll go ahead and crack that bleeder screw open. And we'll see what comes out of it now. Should get some, some nasty fluid, but uh, not quite as much this time. That comes out kind of slow, so I'm going to have to I'll stop here, let that fill up a little bit, and uh, show you guys what I got coming out. Sometimes you got to use a uh, good old impact wrench to uh, get some of those lug nuts off. Those things were on there way too tight on the uh, front of the car. I got the, the truck all flipped around, got the rear tires put back on, got the... Uh, front of it jacked up on jack stands just like the back and the tires off and um, just a word about the lug nuts actually it's not as critical on the rear brakes because they're drums as it is on the front brakes but I'd like to use a uh, torque wrench and uh, torque those down to specifications that way I get a nice even torque around all those bolts because what ends up happening is is that uh, and it may not be the case on this particular setup because I'm not sure if the hub is integrated into the rotor or not. Some are, some aren't. But if you have an uneven torque on these bolts, it'll act to kind of pull the rotor in different directions according to the torque on the lug nuts. And you end up with a warped rotor if once the rotor gets real hot. So it's always just a good idea to have an even torque around here. And the front's going to be a little bit easier for you guys to see what I'm doing here. I got, here's the bleeder screw and here's the uh, hose attached to it to the catch can and I'm just going to go ahead and uh, crack that once I um, go ahead and uh, apply some pressure here to the system and um, just like on the rear brakes I'm going to do the side that's farthest away on the front from the master cylinder first and then I'll do the side that's closest to the master cylinder last. So uh, let me go ahead and get started and we'll see what kind of crud comes out. By the way, I, I did have a third can to show you guys. That's the uh, brake fluid from the uh, passenger side on the rear which actually started coming out clean. So uh, now you can see the progression of dirty old fluid down into clean fluid right there the way it should be. So let me get started uh, bleeding that side and we'll see what we get. Well you guys aren't going to be able to see immediately what this uh, dirty fluid looks like. I had to completely remove the bleeder screw because I wasn't getting any flow. And um, that's because of all the corrosion internal to the system here. This is exactly why we want to bleed the brakes every couple of years. You can see that hole is completely obstructed with corrosion. So I gotta take this thing out. Hopefully the camera will focus sometime this year. 
I gotta clean that thing out and uh, put this thing back in so I can go ahead and do a proper bleed. Hopefully the inside of that caliper it looks more like that bright metal than the corrosion on the side. So let me uh, see if I can clean that up and get that out of there and put it back in. Okay, after that little uh, hiccup was taken care of, got the bleeder screw all cleaned up, and it's flowing quite nicely, and you can see all the nasty fluid, which I will, uh, after it's done, pour into that clear container and uh, see what the original front fluid looks like compared to the rear. Okay, that fluid there is the first pass of the uh, front brakes, the right... Uh, front caliper and it's not as bad as the uh, original fluid from the rear because it has less travel, less path to go, line is shorter and um, I also uh, lost a little bit of fluid during the process of cleaning up the bleeder screw so that's not a true test but you can definitely tell the difference old back fluid, new back fluid and then the original uh, front fluid so uh, the next pass should be even cleaner. Okay, so now we have on the right the second pass on the front system and you can see how much cleaner that is compared to all the others. So that's just what we want to see. And uh, now we'll uh, get over here to the front brakes. I've checked to make sure I have enough fluid. Got my 10 pounds of pressure. And I don't think I'll have any problem with this bleeder screw, but uh, let's find out here. Let's do a the first bleed. There we go. You can see the fluid starting to come out. Try to crack that a little more. These things are kind of hard to bust loose. Got a lot of uh, corrosion and debris in there. And try to hold it up so the hose doesn't kink. Yeah, it's pretty nasty. So I'll go ahead and uh, let that continue to bleed and we'll see what that looks like. Before I dump out this container after bleeding the uh, driver's side front brake, I wanted to show you what kind of uh, contamination we've got in there. Little bits of rust and pieces of rubber and all other kinds of contamination that uh, the power bleeding has uh, flushed out of the system. That was all inside the brake system and those are the kinds of particulates and abrasives that cause uh, the seals in the master cylinder to fail and uh, ABS systems to malfunction and all kinds of expensive repairs to take place. Stuck pistons and calipers and stuck pistons and the wheel cylinders in the back. So it's um, just a really good idea to flush out this brake fluid and get new fluid in there. It's, uh, it absorbs water and when it does the boiling point lowers and makes the brakes less effective. And uh, the other thing you want to look out for just as I found out in the uh, bleeder screw up here, the corrosion was already starting to set in. It was uh, basically stuff like this all into the system. The moisture trapped in there starting to cause corrosion and you just don't want that all inside your calipers and everything and your brake lines would rust from the uh, inside out. So hopefully I've gotten to this problem just in time. I don't think the fluid's ever been changed before. Hopefully I'll get a few more years out of the calipers and brake lines and uh, master cylinder and uh, just want to show you guys the before and after shot. I still have to take everything back apart but um, hopefully you can see the difference of, uh, in the fluid color and that master cylinder it looks just like it's supposed to now. Currently it's a little bit over full. I'm going to go ahead and uh, crack a bleeder screw open down here, doesn't matter where, and keep the pressure to zero and see if I can get that level on down just to the maximum there so I don't have any slosh going on around turns and stuff and uh, leaking out of the master cylinder but this video just continues on with the uh, maintenance of the truck and just going through all the fluids and getting it ready to for the next 15-20 years and I uh, just wanted to share you guys with you guys the process I go through to kind of 
get a vehicle ready. So uh, next time we're going to be doing the, uh, I still have to change the uh, fluid in the front differential there. And I'm going to have to change the uh, power steering fluid. And then finally I'm going to go ahead and uh, completely drain and flush the uh, coolant system and replace all the hoses and everything and um, probably put a new radiator in here. I think I uh, have a leak down on the passenger side bottom part of the radiator right where these crimps are. That's a very typical place to have a leak. So I might replace the radiator. I'm not really for sure yet. But um, stay tuned for the uh, next installment. I um, would highly recommend the uh, Motive Products Power Bleeder if you guys don't have one or haven't seen one before. Hopefully I've showed you a little bit into how it works and um, how it hooks up. It's got this generic adapter on here, so you don't have to have a Ford-specific adapter or Chrysler or GM. It kind of fits most master cylinders. And they also make other kits for different kinds of cars, even the older cars that have the uh, rectangular master cylinders with the metal top on them. And uh, the only thing I don't like about this, it's a little bit... Um, difficult to use from the standpoint of the fittings here. It, they don't make it very easy to uh, get a flare wrench or flare nut wrench on these things to tighten these up and they're also not quick disconnect. So you kind of have to hook everything up here first and then put the uh, adapter on. Um, so that's a, a very minor drawback. Um, other than that, this, this system really works out great and it's not very expensive and it's um, a lot better than the old method where you have two people. One puts their foot on the brake pedal applying force while the other one cracks a bleeder screw open until the uh, pedal bottoms out. Then you close the bleeder and pump the pedal back up again and continue on. That method works, but uh, not quite as effective as uh, this method, especially if you don't have a second person to help you out. But um, that basically continues the Blake breed process. I'm happy with the results. I had um, some really crappy fluid in this thing just waiting to cost me lots of money down the road. Not sure when that would have failed. But I'm glad I got that stuff out of here and got some brand new fluid in here to uh, restore the uh, braking performance of this F-250 back to specifications.